Hey YouTube, SMAC here. Doing a little eBay evaluation today. I found just perusing some lots. I haven't done an eBay purchase in a while. And I wanted to really just basically keep my videos up on eBay evaluation. Mostly just to sharpen my skills. But uh, they're nice videos to make. So got this lot from oh, hi dad address. Uh, that one's fine. Okay, good deal. Uh, this is my new uh, stack that I have to do mail calls for. So uh, I I uh, hit my bank account pretty hard last month. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I'll get as many videos out as I can. So this was a buy it now lot with 850 with the flat rate shipping box there. And I saw two things in there, and I'm thinking, well, I'd pay $20 for those, so let's just go ahead and buy this. Like, all right. So let's start off with the cheapies. And I really mean cheapies. So we have an 88 penny, which isn't that BU. Not sure why it's in here. There's a 2013P, which, if I'm not mistaken, is pretty blingy. A 95D Lincoln set scent and a 91d they're all in nice shape i think they were in here because they were toned not a big toner guy so i don't know i mean even when they're uncirculated they're what 20 cents so no big deal i'll put them with the rest of my u.s coin box that i just carry around that i don't really sort so that's pretty cool all right uh here's another cheap item Dr. Drake's for croupy coughs due to colds. Galesco for adults. Cough relief starts with the first swallow. They certainly didn't understand innuendos back in the day, did they? Or if they did, they didn't care. They thought it was funny. Not allowed to be funny anymore. I rubbed a Q-tip across that. That is on the coin. That is corrosion. I was hoping to get that cleaned up because this is a nice 1950 wee penny. And the back's really nice. Now, the spots where it merges to the aluminum is pretty rubbed down. So, I mean, it's a damaged coin anyway. But for 1950p, it looks all right. Anyway... Cool token. It'll go with the American stuff that I don't know what to do with. So, I like Bicentennials. I actually have a whole page of these. So, I will add this to the page. Fair enough. Uh, value a buck. <laughs> I didn't go too uh, extravagant on that one. Pretty sure it's just the clad version. I didn't bite it or lick it or anything, but you can kind of tell. Got two Kennedy halves. One bicentennial and the other one is a 71p so i'm just going to start collecting the halves and put them in my drawer here uh one dateless buffalo i'm just going through the cheap stuff right now i uh, did my best maybe when i fill this up i'll nick a date them and see what we got i know it's not a raised mound so it's not a 13. six steel pennies and one of them they're all in pretty decent shape, but that bottom one really has some luster to it. The rest of them, you can just tell, are steel pennies. None, none of them are corroded, so they're still in nice shape. So I'll, uh, I'll work on this tube and see if we can get a nice tube of steel pennies going as I keep accumulating these lots. Um, here's a nice book filler, 1971 Proof S. He's got a buck twenty written down there. I looked it up on U.S. Coins dot com eh, maybe doesn't matter like i said it's a good book filler i'll throw it into that uh box of u.s coins until i get my dance co dime book and then i'll put it in there so i got 2009 proof quarter set on average i pay like three to five bucks for these things um this one feels a little loose and got a big old crack on it. No box, no cert, no nothing. So basically just the value of the quarters in there. 
Uh, not silver, just S-clad, low mintage, or decent mintage, not super low. Um, again, the case itself is still probably worth 3 bucks to somebody. Not bad. Uh, here is a 1990 uncirculated mint set. And it does have paperwork and everything. And nothing... No deep cams or nothing like that, but they're pretty good shape coins. It is 1990. They're not super old. Cello's perfectly fine. Uh, those things are kind of cool. They'll be popular one day trying to find those if they're not already. Maybe I just don't know. All right, so those are neat. Certification's still in there. Cardboard's still in there. Envelopes are pretty nice shape. I don't know. I try to buy these at five bucks a piece. Uh, they might be worth a little bit more than that. I guess it depends on where you're looking. And then also got the matching 91. So that's pretty cool. I got a whole drawer of these down below. I will put them in the drawer and uh, go on from there. What else we got here today? So we got some V-Nickels in this $28 lot. 1910. Nope, that one's a little rubbed off. I flipped these. These are all in loose bags, by the way. 1905 and another 1910 on average what buck 50 two bucks three bucks depending on where you're looking where you're buying i don't think any of those were a key date i did look them up yeah i basically put the buck 50 down for all of them just to be conservative uh, let's see here got some buffaloes all right, this is 25P. This is the 35, I want to say this was the D. Nope, looks like a P to me. Uh, yep, 25 and 35 were both P. And then this one, I'm going to have to throw into the scope, maybe use an ALS or something. Originally, I thought it was a 21, but I couldn't tell. I think that last number has some roundness to it. My final guess is a 28. The only reason I really cared about it is that it's an S. So, uh, I'll set it to the side, do some more research on this bad boy. Uh, 28S is worth, you know, a few, few shekels more than a regular buffalo, but not much. So... You're talking 50 cents a piece, maybe a buck. 25p, it grades a touch higher. It's okay. So that's not too bad. I basically give myself a dollar a piece on those. That might be a little high for the 35, but it's all good. All right, the next little round I got here was some Indian head pennies. All right, I'm going to put this down for a second. And I say pennies. The bank says pennies. I understand. I've been doing lots of reading on the word pence, fennig, penny. I get it. They're cents. Everybody knows what a penny is. It's all good. You're allowed to say either if I ever go into a live chat. So, 1882. Nice, decent detail. Not completely rubbed off. So, either, what did I give the 82? The 82, I, I'll give a VG because you can re really read the word. Liberty on there. Maybe is this the one? I got it. Yeah, you can see the word Liberty on there. That's not bad. I know that's the first place to look on these. I didn't look at the professional grading guide on these or nothing, but the 91, I basically give the bottom value there. Uh, it's a G, barely see the Liberty, but you can see all the details and it has some uh, mechanical damage on it just a little bit. Yeah, you can see it in there. So we're talking maybe a dollar or something on these. 1895, uh, pretty worn down. I think I give this one a, an AG. I even give it less than a G value on this one. Um, again, just learning how to grade stuff myself. I'm no professional, but just reading what I can. Oh, my scope wanted to get, wanted to play. And then here's a 1900, which is in pretty good shape. I actually, even though it's dirty, it's got lots of detail. Uh, you can actually see the Liberty. And you can see the shield, lots of the wreath. 
pretty good detail. I like this one. I actually give it a better than G. I almost give it an F. Um, again, not a grader, but gives a little bit more value to it. But this is the one that really caught my eye. $18.99. I looked at this under the scope. I did not see brush marks or any kind of chemical wear or nothing. You can easily see the bands on the Liberty. You can see the words. Everything's tight on the front. You can see the feather detail. On this back, there is a couple spots on the wreath. Oh, it's not liking me there. There's a couple wear spots on the wreath, but not very many. But you can see the ribbon detail. You can see the shield detail. You can see the stars, the even the little lines in the shield. I was ecstatic to find this one. And this might pay for the whole lot. Uh, conservatively, I'm thinking on that extra fine, possibly AU. Uh, I hate to give anything AU unless it's super blingy. But anyway, this is a... The minimum of $15 coin. I was pretty happy. I mean, if you disagree with me, yeah, just let me know. Uh, correct me. Judge me. Uh, let me know. I'm learning. I don't mind being wrong on these things because they're just going into a book or my drawer right now. I don't plan on selling anytime soon. All right. So, the exciting ones. I got some wheat pennies here. And I saw these... And this is why I really bought the lot, just because of these, actually, just these two pennies right here. And yes, they are 1909P and a 1909P VDB. And uh, I'm not going to get too crazy on them. They're all in G shape, maybe even AG. So this one's about 10 bucks most days, a couple bucks here. Um, 1912, 1911. 1918 S, uh, 1917, 1910. I don't know who flipped these, but that really messes with my brain. 1918, and these are all in G shape, nothing special. 1919, they even put it on the back side. Oh my goodness. 1919. This one was labeled. 1911 S. It is definitely an S. It is definitely 191. And your guess is as good as mine on the other number. I know I'm not doing any service here with my lamp above my phone, but oh well, maybe I'll put this under the scope of that buffalo one day and we'll figure it out. thought I might have saw a little nick that made a three you kind of see the little one there I don't know anyway 1911 s uh, talking $50 coin even in G shape there is a small mechanical damage I mean if it is a 1911 s what book value maybe 25 to 40 bucks who knows Anyway, still exciting. We'll try to figure that out one day. And then, if you can't see all these carded coins right there, those are all foreigns. And yes, I got all this for $28. So, uh, foreign coins. According to Demista, it was about $36 in trade value. Or, I don't think they do retail. It's mostly, they find stuff on eBay, stuff like that. And I got a Japanese uh, 100 yen, 60% silver in there. Kind of exciting. Let's see if I can run through these real fast. Nope, those are the buffaloes. Where did I do with them? Anyway, so I had some nice, oh, here we go. Some low mintage, 6 million Israel coin. There's my 59, 60% silver. Uh, this is a... This looks like a proof coin from New Zealand. Also have this 
British Honduras or Belize, I believe. One cent brawn from 66. They only made them for sets that year, according to Numista. Only about 100,000 coins. Seems a lot for uh, sets, but the, it didn't. It seemed. Yeah, they weren't in main circulation. But uh, this is called Scallop to Cut with 12 notches. Like my shape coins. So there we go. And then it's a Russian ruble. Kind of cool. 100 million of them made. Not that special, but uh, they do hold a little bit of value. They're not bad. And then this one, I believe, 75,000 made. Belize, British, British Honduras, 1952. Uh, 25 cents. Copper nickel. And I think if you flip it just right, it might have a little rotation on that. But these are going for over 5 to 10 bucks on eBay, so... Uh, didn't rate that high in New Mista. Almost five bucks, but it was pretty cool. So, all in all, my value. Oh, forgot about this. For you uh, Canadian lovers, you know how special that coin is. A whole roll, Canadian 2012 cents. Anyway, according to Numista, these things go for about a buck a piece. And obviously, I've got 50 of them. I highly doubt it's $50 in value. But in uncirculated condition, they go for a buck a piece. According to Numista. That's all the that's my reference point. So according to USACoinbook.com and Numista, I've got $60 in American coinage, re era trade slash book value. $36 in foreign, and then whatever you want to give me for this. So, I'd say got about I'd say I got about a hundred dollar lot here, um, book value. So maybe cash value in that fifty to sixty range, depending on when I can sell it. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening this long, and uh, we're going to wrap this video up. And thanks for watching my eBay purchase evaluation. Thanks.